Hi, today we'll be talking about one of my favorite immunohistochemical markers in lung pathology, TTF1, or thyroid transcription factor 1. Uh, thyroid transcription factor is a nuclear marker. Uh, like other nuclear markers we've talked about in some of the other videos like uh, PAX-8 or GATA-3. And it stains lung epithelium, especially alveolar pneumocytes, and uh, thyroid epithelium, specifically thyroid follicular cells. So that's what it stains in terms of normal. I'll show you some examples. Here's an example of TTF1 staining in normal alveolar pneumocytes. Staining is also seen in type 2 alveolar pneumocytes that are more plump, and staining is also seen in a couple of other lung epithelial cells. Here's an example of TTF1 staining in a respiratory bronchiole, which is seen in the center of the image, uh, to the left of the smooth muscle. And you can see it's fairly strong, uh, robust staining. In general, the more peripheral and distal the bronchiole, uh, the more um, obvious or strong the TTF1 staining is. And as you go proximally towards the bigger bron you know, bronchi, uh, staining tends to get patchy and disappear. So in the next, I'll show you staining now in a more proximal bronchiole, which is at the left side of the image. So on the right, you see strong staining in alveolar pneumocytes. And on the left, you see rather weak and patchy staining um, in the epithelium um, of a bronchiole. And so as you go more and more proximally, so as you go towards the bigger bronchi, even this staining tends to disappear uh, and eventually disappears completely. So TTF1 is really a marker of distal lung epithelium more than anything else. Now in terms of tumors, the most important thing to remember is that TTF1 stains approximately 80% of lung adenocarcinomas. That is the majority of adenocarcinomas that are primary to the lung. Here's an example. So here's a gland-forming malignant tumor. This is an adenocarcinoma. This was found in a lung biopsy. And you don't need to stain these up, but I'm showing you what happens if you do stain them up. So uh, um, lung adenocarcinomas are typically positive for CK7 or cytokeratin 7, typically negative for CK20 or cytokeratin 20, and they are strongly and diffusely positive for TTF1. This is the classic immunohistochemical profile of an adenocarcinoma that is primary to the lung. Now it's important to remember the reverse of that because people often remember the rule which is that lung adenocarcinomas are positive for TTF1 and they forget that that means that TTF1 is negative in 20% of lung adenocarcinomas. I'll repeat that. TTF1 is negative in a fifth of lung adenocarcinomas, one-fifth. It is also negative in most mucinous adenocarcinomas. In my experience, almost all of them are negative, even when they are primary to the lung, which is not an uncommon situation. Finally, in an adenocarcinoma of, of an unknown primary, in let's say a metastatic site, let's say you're dealing with the liver or, or brain, a negative TTF1 stain does not exclude a lung primary. And this follows from the fact that 20% of lung adenocarcinomas are negative for TTF1. In other words, a negative TTF1 does not exclude lung cancer. Now we come to the second lung tumor that's classically positive for TTF1, and that is small cell lung carcinoma. And the thing to remember here is that most small cell lung carcinomas are positive for TTF1, but not all of them. Um, the second thing to remember in this setting is that um, if you're dealing with a small cell carcinoma in, let's say, the bladder or the liver or the brain, in that setting, TTF1 does not prove that a small cell carcinoma is coming from the lung. In, otherwise, in other words, it's not specific for lung origin. I've seen TTF-1 staining in uh, esophageal small cell carcinoma, uh, prostate, bladder, pancreas, uh, even primary tonsillar small cell carcinoma I've seen with TTF1 positivity. So it is not a marker of lung origin for small cell carcinoma. It is uh, a much better marker of lung origin in adenocarcinomas of the lung. Here is uh, some literature search that I'd done several years ago when I was a resident, and I still find this helpful. When you look at the literature, 
in TTF1, on, on TTF1 staining in small cell carcinoma, there are several papers, um, almost all of them have 50 cases or less, um, but they have varying degrees of TTF1 positivity in small cell carcinoma. So the paper shown at top, which is Bird, Gloucester, and Kegel, uh, is now about 18 years old, showed 97% of small cell carcinomas were TTF1 positive. The next paper down, De Loreto and De Lauro, is, is even older than that, showed 93% of small cell carcinomas positive. Uh, one of the biggest studies was Sturm, Sturm and Brambia, showed 86%. Uh, and as you go down the table, you see even less and less and less, uh, such that in 2004, Chang et al. did a study in lung cancer which showed only 53% positive. So if you more or less average out all the papers that have been shown in the literature, uh, it comes to about 80% or, or more, uh, slightly more than 80% of small cell carcinomas of the lung are TTF1 positive. However, again, the corollary is that as, as some proportion of small cell lung carcinomas are going to be TTF1 negative and that's very important to remember that negative TTF1 does not rule out small cell carcinoma. Here's an example of a typical uh, small cell carcinoma lung. Uh, high mag shows very little cytoplasm, very small nucleoli, nuclear molding, a very high grade poorly differentiated appearance. There's some necrosis in the middle of the tumor, cells are dying there's mitotic activity. So this is classic morphology for a small cell. As you would expect, there is this a tumor is positive for keratin AE1 slash AE3, and it shows either a rim-like pattern or a dot-like pattern in, in the tumor cells. And that's really a function of the fact that there's very little cytoplasm in these cells. What happens with chromogranin to an even more severe extent is that you see very minimal staining either as a rim or a little dot uh, around the tumor cell nuclei. So this is a neuroendocrine carcinoma and this is the classic TTF1 positivity that you see in a small cell. Uh, most commonly it is strong and diffuse uh, nuclear positivity. Our fourth point is that TTF1 is consistently negative in small cell, I, I'm sorry, in squamous cell carcinoma and we're talking about lung carcinoma. Um, it's consistently negative in squamous cell carcinoma of the lung provided that you use the right clone of TTF1. And we'll talk about this in the next few slides. If you use the most specific clone, which is the one we use, and we used in our uh, paper that's cited here, and that's 8G7G3-1. This is the most specific clone of TTF1, and the best one in my experience. Then no cases of squamous cell carcinoma should be positive for TTF1. In this paper where we looked only at the poorly differentiated squamous, not the obvious ones, uh, we stained them on biopsy specimens and none of them were positive for TTF1. And on resection, all of them turned out to be squamous. Um, and they all had P63 positivity, for example. Um, so this should never stain squamous cell carcinomas. On the other hand, if you use a less specific clone, and that's uh, one example is uh, uh, SPT24, which some people like to use because it's more sensitive for adenocarcinomas, it is less specific and therefore it will stain some percentage of squamous cell carcinomas. In this paper by Natasha Reckman, 3% uh, of squamous cell carcinomas were positive. So I would suggest not using the SPT24 clone because we really rely highly on specificity when we're trying to subtype non-sponsored lung cancers with TTF1. Another very non-specific clone is this clone called SP141. SP141 uh, was studied in this paper by Klebe et al. Uh, and published in 2016. And if you look at the row that's highlighted by the arrow, it shows atypical squamous lesions, um, 13 of them, 12 of which were just squamous cell carcinomas, one of which was a dysplasia. If you look at the G7G3-1, none of none of the uh, squamous cell carcinomas were positive. So, as you as you would expect with the specific clone, but if you use the non-specific clone SP141, almost half of these squamous cell carcinomas were positive. So this is a big, big pitfall of using these non-specific TTF1 clones. So stick with the 8G7G3/1 in your lab. Number five, when a non-small cell lung carcinoma cannot be subtyped on HNE, in other words, when you, 
when you have a tumor that is a non-small cell but doesn't make glands or mucin or doesn't show keratinization. At that point, TTF1 staining is very helpful and indicates an adenocarcinoma. Uh, of course, there are exceptions. If, if, if a tumor is a car obvious carcinoid tumor, that doesn't apply. If it has neuroendocrine features and you're thinking about a large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma, this doesn't apply. But for garden variety non-small cell carcinomas that are not neuroendocrine, um, in those cases, TTF1 staining is a strong indicator of adenocarcinoma if uh, one's con conventional morphology has failed to supply. Um, we published on this in 2011. This, was, this has now become the gold standard paper for subtyping. It's been cited nearly 300 times in the literature. Um, and this looked specifically at the issue of poorly differentiated non-small cell carcinoma subtype. Uh, and we looked at tumors like this where you really cannot be sure whether this is an adenocarcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma, but you're sure this is a non-small cell carcinoma. And in that case, a panel of cells uh, helps. So in those days, we did TTF, Napsin, P63, and CK56. In, in the current day and age, in most cases, TTF1 and P40 are enough. Uh, so you can see here that TTF1 and napsin are both positive. TTF1 is a nuclear marker, napsin is uh, cytoplasmic and granular, and the squamous stains are both negative. So this is a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma uh, based purely on immunohistochemical markers, and that's because the conventional morphology uh, was just inadequate for subtyping here. Here's another example that I presented several years ago. Um, at, an, at a major meeting, and that's of an elderly gentleman with a big mass, which underwent a needle biopsy, CT guide needle And that shows cores of, of tissue with very small foci of carcinoma, and that's usually the problem with these, is that tumor is very little, and there just isn't enough architecture to be sure uh, it's an adenocarcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma. In these cases, uh, immunohistochemistry is required for subtyping these tumors. If you use the four stain panel, you will see that TTF and napsin are positive, P63 and CK56 are negative, and so this is an adenocarcinoma based purely on immunohistochemical subtyping. Our sixth point is that TTF1 can also be positive in carcinoid tumors of the lung, both typical and atypical. Uh, staining is usually weak and patchy. Um, most cases, TTF1 is actually negative, but, uh, but uh, can be positive in a weak and patchy fashion. And the other tumor that is uh, that can be positive for TTF1 is large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma of the lung, which is a very controversial and difficult entity. And for our last point, we'll talk about metastatic sites. So adenocarcinomas that are in metastatic sites like the, like the lymph nodes, liver, brain, soft tissues, skin, any site where you're, you're, you have an adenocarcinoma and you're wondering, could this be from the lung? And you're wondering, what could I do to to confirm that. Now, of course, the best thing to look for is that there is a lung mass radiologically, and that, that goes without saying you want to look for it. But often, even without that, uh, often, often you don't have that information. Or if you did have that information, there are also masses in other sites, so it's not entirely clear where the tumor is coming from. In this situation, the best profile to support a lung primary is positivity for TTF1 and napsin, and negative staining for PAX8. And the virtue of this is that it not only gives you two stains that are that should be positive in lung adenocarcinomas, it also gives you a stain that essentially excludes a thyroid primary from the differential and thus makes the likelihood of this being lung even stronger. We actually looked at metastatic adenocarcinomas in a paper that we did in 2012 when I was in Syracuse. And in that, we showed that when the site of the origin, the site of origin of a metastatic adenocarcinoma was the lung, 82% of those cases stained with TTF1. So that matches up with what we know from primary lung adenocarcinomas, about 80%. However, non-pulmonary origin cancers um, also stain for TTF1, and the big offender there is thyroid. So all nine of these non-pulmonary cases were thyroid cancers. So for that, we really do need Pax8. Now I'll show you a couple of examples from tumors um, that we used in that study. So in this uh, example, there's a brain metastasis, and this tumor is positive for TTF1 and napsin. And if you could show that it's Pax8 negative, that would really prove that 
to the highest degree possible that this is um, a, a lung origin adenocarcinoma. Here's uh, another metastatic tumor. And uh, here, napsin is pretty strongly positive. TTF is only weakly positive. Now, this happens, but not very commonly that napsin outperforms TTF1. And that's one argument for using both TTF and napsin uh, in this situation. But in this case, the site of origin was lung. Here's a case where the site of origin was breast, so notice, notice that TTF1 is negative in this tumor, and mammoglobin was positive, which supported breast origin. Now, nowadays, of course, we would use GADA3, uh, either alone or in combination with mammoglobin. In this case, uh, you can guess from the morphology that the site of origin was kidney. In, uh, kidney cancers can be positive for uh, napsin A, so that's a pitfall, but they're not positive for TTF1. So TTF1 is very helpful in that. Here's a site of origin thyroid, and you might think that TTF will be positive, but napsin won't. But actually, papillary thyroid carcinomas are known to be positive for napsin A in a small proportion of cases. So in cases like that, the combination of TTF and napsin actually does not prove a lung origin. But if you could show that this tumor is Pax8 negative, that really uh, would be very helpful. In this particular case, because the site of origin was thyroid, Pax8 will be strongly and diffusely positive. We had uh, um, some endometrial mets, and in this particular case, um, the metastasis uh, was to the inguinal lymph nodes. In this particular case, napsin is positive and TTF is negative. We were one of the first uh, to ever show that napsin A could be positive in endometrial uh, adenocarcinomas, and subsequently many other people uh, confirmed this finding uh, in larger series of GYN primary cases. So remember, GYN primaries can be positive for napsin. In fact, they can ev even occasionally be positive for uh, TTF1. Again, Pax8 is very, very helpful when that is uh, the question. So to end this presentation, I leave you with this uh, message, and that is that TTF is a good marker of both lung adenocarcinoma and small cell lung carcinoma. However, it is not perfect. It's neither perfectly sensitive nor perfectly specific for these two tumors. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for listening.